So we'll kick things off, um, and we will not have any figures for the public forum. Um, with the roll call show that all members are present, but Holly is Schweitzer is uh, on remotely, uh, digitally. So uh, we have a quorum established, and we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, every once in a while I uh, read, read our norms that we established there about a year and a half ago. To, Remind us, and I'll, I'll do so tonight. Um, acceptance, uh, <clears throat> collaboration, compromise, uh, friendliness, honesty, respect, understanding, um, challenge, challenging, um, communication, follow through, fun, listening, and trust. The, uh, I do. I do want to um, let everybody know it's good to be back um, in an unusual set of circumstances. I haven't uh, missed uh, two of the last three meetings. One of them I attended digitally. Uh, long planned in, in a vacation. The other one was was not planned ahead. Was sur was surgery and. Uh, it was the day of the surgery, which is the, the only day the surgeon could do it. So it wasn't a good idea to attend digitally either because of uh, uh, combination of pain meds and, and such like. So uh, and I thank John for ably filling in um, in the role of chair. I did not feel comfortable chairing the meeting from it over the journey, over the um, Christmas Zoom there. So, um, we will uh, proceed into um, the cons uh, actually my recommendation is uh, after talking this is not to approve his consent agenda because Scott has uh, some new things that he wasn't able to get out in time in the packet for us uh, on uh, resignations and hires so um, with your permission Lord we'll, we'll skip the consent agenda and we will have a closed session on resignations, hirings, and, and, uh, and one other uh, issue in relation, relation to our uh, review of Scott there. So, um, so that, uh, so we both the unfinished business, which was the review, potential approval of the revised uh, policy um, on 411. And um, that uh, is the addition that we had requested. We had a request from the board for additional comments from the attorney. You all should have received those uh, comments, and they're in the packet as well. Um, I uh, can we begin this with a, a motion to adopt the policy now that it has been read, read twice in two different meetings? And, I make the motion. Moved by Mandy. Is there second? Second by Katie. Open for discussion. Hearing none. Um, I just. Okay. I still don't understand the purpose of this based on <laughs> comments by Mr. Macy in his first paragraph that Title IX and Section 118.13 prohibit discrimination and participation in curriculum extracurricular activity programs or activities as well as his recommendation that the district should just follow the guidance of WIAA who's uh, set a very strict and concise policy for participation so I just I don't see where this applies unless we're willing to do it I, I would uh, just on the WIAA WIAA side of it uh, in, in our conversation with Mrs. Hauser, this this would not be a conflict with WIAA policy. Uh, 
I didn't say that, Chris. I said it would be recommended to follow the WIA policy. We wouldn't follow in your policy. We would actually be more stringent, which is acceptable under WIA. You can't be less stringent. You can be more stringent. And many, many schools do participate in WIA um, that have um, this as a policy. Most of them are private schools, but um, they do participate in it's not a problem. Is this a vote? Yeah, this is. Then I say we just move forward with the vote, vote because we beat this to death. Yeah. Calling the question? Yeah. Calling the question? Any objections oh, to that? Yeah, I do. Well, then we'll vote on calling the question. Uh, all in favor? I, I said I had an objection to calling the question. Yeah, when we object to calling the question, that means we vote on it. And it yeah. has to have two thirds. Is there a reason you want to vote on the question? Yeah. No, you, can, you can't debate a call of the question. If the call of the question is defeated, then we can debate the issue. So um, that's Robert's rules. So we're going to vote right away on calling the question. Who? Is in favor of calling the question. Aye. 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 I. 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 do a roll call. Yeah, we better do a roll call. Wait, hold on. I'm going to do roll call. call on calling the question. You have to with Holly being removed. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. true. I'm making a separate chart calling the question. You hear everything, Holly? Yes. Okay. So, um, Mark made the motion to call the question. No. Or I mean to remind it, right? No, uh, no. So I'm going to say no. I'm voting no to calling the question because that's voting on right now. So when I first on your list there? Yes, you are okay. first. Yep. Okay, so calling the question, Mark. Is no. I'm yes. Hold on. Holly Schweitzer. Yes. Terry Wagner. I'm a no. Yes. Andy Wills. Yes. Katie Batten. I'm a yes. Yeah, and Chris Martinson. I'm a yes. So the question is called. We will now proceed right to vote on the, on the uh, motion to adopt um, the addition to the policy, uh, which is policy 411B2, number two. It's in yellow on the packet. And just to read, read it so that nobody is confused, nothing in this policy should be construed as allowing biological males to participate in any all female sports team. We will go with a roll call vote. John Heidemann. Yes. Ali Schweitzer. Yes. Terry Wagner. I'm a Mandy Mills. Yes. Chris Martinson. Yes. Katie Batten. I mean, yes. Mark Grossman. No. The motion carries. This is now. Uh, we'll proceed to new business. Um, and the first thing on the agenda in new business is the summer school program design. And we will call on Mrs. Siebert and uh, Mrs. Kim. Kim. Mrs. Kim will actually present your time. Okay. Good evening. Um, you have the full guide uh, within your notes today. I um, just want to highlight a couple of things for you. Um, we hope to open registration on the 15th. We've done that in the past couple of years via Skyward, and it's very accessible, and we seem to enjoy that. Um, we invite students who are private school students um, to join us. And um, just a few highlights from the elementary level um, Camp Invention in June. A ton of opportunities in July, um, whether that be for academics or elective opportunities. Um, I've actually had a ton of staff that hasn't taught in a while. So we will be going to the public before Easter break. Other questions, comments? I have a question. Yes. Oh. Um, under the transportation portion of that, are they picking up? If should we make sure they're picking up the Highway 45? Am I reading? I just want to read that correctly. Oh, there is a pickup at at Sugarbush, but there is typically a pickup at um, at the trailer park there as well. So there's two pickups, correct? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, John, you have 
we have brought some questions up to Scott about um, a particular mean convoy. We covered those already. Okay, that's, that's probably not going to be something that we can do for summer school. Okay. All right. Um, is um, are we ready to move the agenda then? Thank you. Thank you very much. It sounds like a rigorous um, bunch of classes. Uh, we'll move to number B, review and potential, potential approval of pupil non-discrimination self-evaluation report. Mrs. Mark. Reason board. Um, what we are looking at here is a document that is required by the Department of Public Instruction to be presented to each school board in the state every five years. Um, so for those of you who were on the board five years ago, that is the last time that you saw this examination document. What PI9 is our people non-discrimination policy. So once a year, um, we get an electronic form to fill out from DPI asking for our data from the school year. Um, this is a compilation of looking at the last five years. And the purpose of this is to analyze our data and make sure that the trends that we have in athletics and activities and scholarship distribution matches the demographics in our district. So if we have a certain percentage of bilingual students or a certain percentage of special ed students, that they are equally represented across all of our demographics. So I think the parts of this document there's um, different layers to this document. A lot of it is our, well, let's just take page by page. On the first page, you're gonna see everybody who worked together to compile this document across the district, most of our administration team and most of our counseling and people service team, as well as our district registrar and a lot of our building level secretaries. We also put in this document what our current trends are on use of promoting non-discrimination across the district. So you're going to see in the next couple pages all of our counseling curriculum and how we address that at certain levels. But I think the board is going to be most interested in the three charts that are in here. So if you look at the first chart, it is our athletic programs and activities. And you're going to see a three-year running average there from the year 2020, 2021, 22, 23. Um, as far as our participation in the different demographic areas represented. And then the next chart similar is our activities offerings in our extracurriculars and how we are represented there. And then the last chart shows our scholarship distribution across the last um, three years of data. So again, um, our district registrar and Katie Belayo, our um, high school activity secretary, put together all of this data. Phil Sloma, our athletic director, also dug into this document and he made some updates to the board on things that we have added to the programming based on student suggestions because a lot of this um, examination every five years is asking, is the school district taking in the student voices and all, are all student groups represented in those voices? So Phil um, added on here that since the last time this board was uh, this was presented to the board, we have added the ice fishing team, the Bulldog Peer Mentoring Program, the Principal Advisory Council, and the Best Program. Um, and then we have added some clubs like esports. Um, and there, probably Yeah, thank you. So. Um, he will continue to offer those surveys to students every year just to make sure that all areas and all groups of students are represented. Are there any questions on any of the data that was compiled in this document? Not a question on the data itself. How close, what's the error factor that they allow for? Because it's never going to be perfectly matched. So do you have to be with them plus or minus 5%? Or what's their error? That's a good question, Mr. Wenger. There isn't a grade given to this. It's just the purpose of this is that the district sits down as this team once every five years and examines ourselves. It's a self-examination to make sure that we're not missing the goal. So DPI isn't giving us a report card on this, I think is what you're asking. So we do it for ourselves. We do it for ourselves, but- Based on mandate. Yes, but related to that, the federal government also requires us to submit once a year to the Office of Civil Rights at the federal level this similar data, and that there is a report card. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how close do you have to be in that? Is there, you know, you're never going to hit this on the mark. If you do, it's 
luck. Right. At best. So do they give you some error factor that you can work with? Are they looking for huge swings or? They are looking the for idea? trends that would be alarming. So for example, if every student that had a discipline infraction at the middle school or high school was all in the same racial category, that would throw a flag, if, okay. if that makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions? I was just going to add, it's, it seems like um, we're uh, trying to trying to do something that is uh, almost racially slanted by saying, you know, you're going to hit these percentages. I mean, I, you can make something available equally to everybody, but you can't make them sign up for it. And that's exactly what they're looking for, Chris. You hit that right on the head. They want to make sure that these things are available for all students and that there isn't anybody that's not being offered these opportunities. So you were exactly right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, same thing, five years from now, we'll do that again. <laughs> so we have to prove this. Uh, there's no, uh, it's just our self is going to present it to the board for feedback. Yeah. So just reading the potential yeah. approval. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that says potential approval. Yeah, we'll take the action. Do we, need to, do we need to approve this or is it something that automatically gets filed unless we, we take I this? need to submit this to DPI by May 30th. So if the board is willing to make that approval and then I will um, submit the board minute this to DPI so, so that they know this was presented to the board. Okay, I'm going to a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Moved by Terry, seconded by Mark. <laughs> and we will have a roll call. Roll call. Uh, how much rights are? Yes. 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 Mandy Wills. Yes. Katie Batten. I'm a yes. Chris Martinson. Yes. Mark Grossman. Yes. John Heidemann. Yes. Okay, next is review and potential approval of Hesser 3 funding for school furniture resources. Um, Joe, are you up for this? So I can kick it off with that. So if you remember, uh, we had conversation about a potential expenditure to support uh, enhancements to our uh, building level furniture and equipment throughout the district. And uh, at that time, we went out and sought feedback from uh, staff and uh, leadership at individual buildings. What you have within is a reflection of that, um, utilizing a percentage of our ESSER funds to uh, fulfill all of our expectations with the furnishing job. Yeah. Not much more to add. This was reviewed at every facility meeting, also prior to the board in January to look for that. But these are. Uh, Places for students to put their materials, students to collaborate, our staff to collaborate, and, and it's kind of silly. It's really coming from our building voice to define what they can use. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase. Move by Mark. Seconded by Mandy. Uh, just okay, all those in favor say aye. Oh, oh man, no, roll call. Roll call once again, yes. <laughs> Okay, we're voting to approve funding for the school furniture. Terry Whitener. Yes. Mandy Wills. Yes. Katie Batten, I'm a guess. Mark Grossman. Yes. Chris yes. Martinson. Yes. John Heidemann. Yes. Ellie Schweitzer. Yes. And just in follow up to that, um, Jill and Scott, um, what does that do to our ESSER funds? To, is, uh, how much is it? Will be left approximately after we do this about three hundred and thirteen thousand. Okay, and I, I know we've been we've had communication from um, Bill Crosto about the idea of using some of it for uh, trying to bring our our scores up, and I just wanted to to uh, say that that if you know. I'd, I'd love to see something like that happen. Yes, I'm I'm not on the agenda. agenda. You're, you're not aware of right now. Well, actually, no. We're, we're well, we we're approved it. We're 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 yeah. And it's a follow-up uh, question. Uh, it's not something we need to, to dwell on, but uh, I do want to make that point. We can uh, talk about it at a future meeting. Unless anybody 
disagrees with, will continue with the next item. All right, um, review and potential approval of youth apprenticeship, K-12 education, and information technology pathway. So board members and committee members are instructional committee. Um, we recently met on uh, March 12th. Yeah, Mr. Yerke joined us to talk about uh, youth apprenticeship as well as uh, opportunities that have changed in that landscape. It's a quick overview of youth apprenticeship, students that have strong interest in a, a career pathway. We support them with that experience. Typically, uh, a business organization takes them on. They exit out of school for about a half a day. They earn a wage or salary <coughs> during that time. They meet expectations set forth by the uh, uh, Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development with standard criteria. Uh, so it's not just extra help coming in. There are benchmarks that's monitored by uh, the school, uh, the DPI, the workforce development, ultimately giving students an opportunity to find that pathway or not a pathway if they say that, hey, this is not working. Uh, two pathways that were shared that we would like to bring forward uh, for consideration. As we've been talking over the past couple of years about uh, Individuals ready uh, going into the education field, okay, and um, growing our own, if you will, or creating opportunities for students that have an interest to support that while they're in the, the high school setting through that youth apprenticeship model. Uh, there is discussion on that, and we feel that is an appropriate pathway now that it is uh, accepted by workforce development um, that our district pursues through with that. As well, uh, information technology, uh, somebody working in IT. And with that, that could be another potential pathway where students on our campus could find an opportunity if deemed appropriate with them. The, the one item that is new to the conversation, as I mentioned earlier, when students have an experience, uh, part of the parameter, they need to get paid for that. So that's the part of coming to the board. If this was something other than looking for uh, just another opportunity, another business organization supported this, they would be paying them. We probably wouldn't be having a, as detailed of a conversation with the board, but wanted to bring this forward that we're recommending that the board does recognize this with an hourly rate of $12 an hour for students that go through the process are properly identified with an appropriate uh, experience um, within our district uh, should that interest come forward. The part that uh, that I was you know pretty passionate about as well as the rest of our Students have this opportunity regardless of our board recognizes this pathway locally. And if we have a, a student that says, hey, I really want to be a teacher or IT, and um, and, we, and we're not supporting it, they could say a neighboring school district that does support it, go and have an experience like that. Just so, like our kids already go to Myron. Right? Exactly. Go to my week or whatever. Right. Exactly. So that would be the, the uh, I guess, the, the impetus of having it here for our students to get that experience locally and ultimately help our staff and support and um, further develop their skill set with that. Danielle, did I miss any fucking points from, from your eyes? Did we talk about, we talked about a cap though, right? Like we could have more than. As, as long as we move forward with this, we're just asking for that we'll work through the process. Oh, so. okay. There's some other things that have to come through. So with the, with the guidelines that are coming from the Department of Workforce Development, there's guidelines for confidentiality, for the age restrictions. You're also doing a lottery, um, just like that. Currently, we have 78 kids that are interested in youth. That was that is for next number. year. Yes. We won't end up with 78 going. So it's making sure that it's the right match. It's making sure that it works with their schedule. It's making sure that the, there is a cooperating teacher. We did discuss with Mr. Yerke about starting small and making sure that we're doing this well. Also using this as an opportunity to train our teachers who are some, we have a kind of changing demographic of our teachers themselves um, to ready to um, host a student <laughs> and looking at that. And then also even the training to make sure that we're, we're capitalizing on those skills checks. So it was more of a question like, of a budget, like if you all of a sudden had 10 kids, but you had mentioned about where where the funding was coming. Do you want to share that? Yeah, so um, the cap will kind of take care of itself because you're not going to have 15 teachers that are able to take a, a student in the classroom either. So we were talking about that. Um, funding is not only funded through, uh, we get a, a percent of the Act 59 money for an industry recognized credential, so up to $1,000 per student for anybody who completed 
industry recognized credential and this meets that. Um, in addition, it is eligible for incentivized through um, uh, Ford for sure and possibly Title II. So Title II gives us the flexibility to create programs for recruiting and retaining highly qualified staff, which also builds some kind of um, flow through through those ways that we're looking at that. So there is a way for us to kind of look at that budget also as an impact through there. So does the workforce development have like a framework so we don't have to reinvent the wheel and put yeah. a lot of tasks on a certain person within our district? Like exactly. as far as the IT teams. So this is, per, this is the best way for us to do it. The only thing that the district is, is committing to doing, they're going to pay for the hours of work. They're going to make sure that the students have the course that complements that. They're going to make sure that um, our coordinator, and right now we actually have the person from CESA 6 who used to be one of our teachers um, who's coordinating that she makes sure that the skills checks are done and all the stuff for the part one of workforce development but it really doesn't tax us yeah it is a good. system and it's unified through the state so it's not like you're trying to compete with somebody else or anything like that so did you say if you did have several kids at the lottery like you would you Choose them. I, I, it's already in the Department of It's already in the process. So again, if we had 15 kids that says I want to go to Northland Electric, they do the same thing. There's gotcha. interviews. There's this. There's that. All of those okay. things that take place. Gotcha. So looking through that. So are you? There's no financial commitment required from the board to support this. I'm not saying that. Well, I think the question asks is fair. What's how much are, are you asking the board to put into it? We're asking right now if we can move forward with allocating $12 an hour, and then we can start building our model to know if we're doing two a year or three year or anything like that. It's a little bit like the talking before the course here, because if you don't have a sense of what our exposure could be, you're, you're kind of asking for carte blanche to approve it goes forward. Is there a cap on what any student can earn in a year? There's a certain hours, right? That they have to complete a certain number of hours. So they have to have 400 hours. So we're just asking for permission to move forward with establishing a program. We're not saying that we're giving it. We're going to establish two people in that role because you would still, if I'm correct, just like you do every hiring, if we're hiring two students for the school district, it would come to this board and you would have to approve it at that level. We're just setting the rate so that we can move forward. But then when you have a hiring request closed session, it would say we're asking for two students to fill the seats for next year. And you say this year the budget won't support, uh, won't support it. And then we'll say go to Hortonville. I mean, the easy way to look at it is if we have a student who wants to go to Myra, like you were talking about, they're under the financial commitment to pay the student dollars an hour to be able to what they have tonight in the topic summary is to essentially be my rent where if a pathway is developed where we have students in IT or education who want to be a part of that we are able to comply with those requirements of the program to have a student uh, be able to do that and every student really is under a different scenario where sometimes they're gone for half the day sometimes they're just gone for a couple hours a day at the beginning or the end uh, these programs are tailored to fit the student needs inside their schedule some of them are athletes some of them just work well students are so lucky here they have an opportunity to do whatever they want and i think the the financial commitment here is something that would be relatively minor because the student is not going to be able to work with us eight hours a day all year long. It's, you know, maybe 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week. It just depends on they going to be a kindergarten student. It's 450 hours. But do, they, do they get to 450? They have to. If they don't, then they just, because all the right. students in every program, some of them don't finish the year. But, but what I'm saying is that in this program, we'd still have to pay them for the hours they did complete. Sure. But what I'm saying is that all students don't finish the program at every every site. They're supposed to, but we don't get the act. It would be $5,000 per 
per student, and we for both Title Title Two and Title Four are eligible, and we get up to a thousand dollars back for Act Twenty if they complete one. Per or not for Act Twenty, up to one thousand dollars per student per for Act Fifty Nine. So you have four thousand dollars commitment for these if there's a match. And they complete the four hundred fifty hours. It's yeah. 400. If they do all of the hours. If they do the four hundred fifty hours. I wasn't under the impression you could do anything less. Like when Ty did it, well, he had to start in the summer, and then he worked for Christmas break because like he was freaking out he wasn't going to hit his hours. I wouldn't want them not to. Complete. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I guess I wasn't aware you couldn't reach your four fifty. Like I thought it was mandatory. Well, some people. Just if they don't, then we don't get the incentive. Right, right. So with the Act 59 recognition. With the Act 59 recognition. Right. And then they so will all I, I just want to clarify, all we're asking is that if, if we can establish that we're going to have a paid position, because currently to be part of the pathway, we need to provide D, DWD with the fact that this posting exists, that we have something where we can hire students. And currently we don't have that. We have someone help. I guess would be the only other thing. Um, and then we can move forward with that, but all of those hiring requests would go through Scott and come to closed session, correct? Yeah, that, that would be one, one approach to doing And that. I can certainly find out what we have in those other grant funds to do those, those things that are there. They are not paraeducators. There are certain guidelines in there. There are all of those things that are there as well. well. I would think that this is the first of doing this. I would think that we wouldn't want to have, say, more than two students participating in, in the, the, the K-12 program, just to be able to monitor them and to, to learn from how much workload was on the part of the staff member that they're working with and so forth. So we take the, the, the dollar amount that you gave us and we said, okay, in the upcoming budget, we're in a budget $10,000 to cover you know, a K-12, uh, two K-12 students on the youth apprenticeship program, we'd be in, we'd be in good shape. Well, don't forget but, IT too. Well, uh, IT going to be done here, is that going to be something that would go out to an organization? What the, the question is, is if you would, so technically there are five areas that you could actually hire as a school district. If you guys are saying that you'd only like to start next year with just education, this is just establishing the pay rate for that, but some of the other areas would be a lot of other places do um, administrative assistant, um, HR, stuff like that, where they do copies, things like that in there. We're not looking at that to be part of our district because it doesn't fit with our course descriptions and our pathways, but IT is an area where they're having a hard finding placement. Mm -hmm. And with our current model of having Wade and Chris Burbridge, there is the occasional, especially during concert season and things like that, where students would be able to. Our question on that is, we don't know if it's 450 hours again. It would be more during the summer. Um, when we talk about all the updates that have to be done to all of the computers, all of the networking, installing all the software, double checking all the printers, changing all of the light bulbs. So all that, that, then you only want to have one person spot. So if that because, could be safe, because, I mean, You've only got two people right now trying to manage the, the district's um, infrastructure and, and that, and then to also be educating somebody along, along the way, it'd be a real challenge to say we're going to have two people that are going to, that you're going to have to be educating, whether it be somewhere during the school year. So then, you know, if we had $15,000 in the budget and if we're going to get $1,000 back for each each one up to up to you know we're going to be in good shape uh, from that standpoint and like anything else start small and then and then grow, grow from there um i don't think that would have a huge impact on the budget but we do i agree with Terry. we got to just have an idea i understand what you're asking for tonight it is this is the this is the hourly wage that we want to build the program around okay then the next piece of that puzzle is how many people are going to be a part of that program that then forms forms the budget, and I think I don't know personally. I would I would vote. I would make a motion that we um, approve this, and we also, when it comes time to budgeting, establish a budget of fifteen thousand dollars for the for the program. Mm -hmm. Unless there's some other so, that we haven't 
Or would you like to, to put it at, in the language of saying up to three? Before you go ahead with that, I have a question. So as far as is, uh, any, of our, any of our students that would like to take advantage of this, as far as the actual teaching side of it and get involved in that and say be, they're not going to go to middle school. They would be at middle or at elementary. Okay. Depending middle or at elementary. Middle or at elementary. Um, so they're basically going to take, yes, there's going to be, there's going to be learning in this. A lot of it's just going to be the interaction of kids working with kids. It cannot be left unsupervised. They True. have to be with their, they have to follow them. In the classroom. With, yep. Okay. Con considering how short we are, zero actual teacher's aides, non-special ed aides. I don't see why we, we would discourage this idea whatsoever. So currently we have between eight and 12 students that do this on a, on a short term basis right now, whether it be one semester, one quarter, one, um, we have some students who do it as a STEM project who go down and volunteer. We've had them go and do like jump work for the heart. We've had some of the students that do a special program for the after school club. They've never been committed to 450 hours. I don't know how many oh, students are going to end up making that happen. Yeah. That I, is going to be. I this, I is a, this is a commitment, I would say, above the norm of what a typical student would make. Yeah. And when they start processing through their other commitments to their, yeah, their school and experiences, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to wager out, well, do I want to be in the musical or mm -hmm. the uh, co curricular and see where that plays into those expectations? So uh, a student that is truly considering this, that's uh, that's tonight. We're vetting this out so we can start that process to really lay the framework of what this is. So if they do come forward, we can share. These are the expectations. They're not for you. Well, and being, I, being that you're not asking for an actual dollar amount, this is just, just approval of the concept. I I don't I don't I don't disagree with your idea that we need to put some sort of a. Of a I asked on it. if there were. Yet, I think it's a little early because I don't think we're going to get that many kids that want to do this. I mean, and we're not we're not giving you the green light to have 50 kids in the, in the in this type of thing. We're not going to get that many. So it's my question then is, and I don't disagree with the program. I think it's a wonderful yeah. concept. The concept for sure. Yeah. But so some somebody says, well, I'm going to join. And now you have to do under 450 hours. If they do 200 and say I'm out, we still owe them two hours of pay, correct? We pay them like we would everybody else. So when they show up for two weeks, they get paid for two weeks. So I'm saying you shake your head and you're saying basically, yeah, yeah we don't pay 200 hours. So you don't pay very much. We're not working. Yeah, but if they work for 200 hours, they pay them for 200 hours. Correct. And then they do not finish out the program. They don't finish out the program. And then they would not be filled with the credentialing. Yeah, they don't have the yeah. certificate of being a youth apprenticeship, uh, meeting those qualifications. I mean, all it has an hour is still an incentive to join something. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I understand, and you guys have done a great job like vetting it from all sides. But there are 12 different pathways that you've never looked at that we have successful students every year that have been on the school report card since 2015. And we're at 92% of our students finish the program. So all we're asking is, this is the only time we've ever asked you to do a pathway. We've been running pathways for, for a lot of time and we do a great job of vetting who's gonna do it and if they're capable of doing it and if they have the skills, skills to do it and if they're gonna be successful in it. And we have students who drop the first week and we didn't enroll them and we have stuff like that. We have a coordinator through season six. And have we been paying them? That was gonna be my question. No, this is good. But we're putting we're putting there's all this stuff that's before the money. Right. Like we're not there's not gonna be 30 people saying I want to get paid twelve dollars. Right. It, it, we get 30 seniors that come in and we end up with 10 really great placements. Yeah. So it will take care of itself. We have 10 really great placements in 16 pathways right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a question on that. I think it was just like how much on you hook for yeah. financially. Like, because this is the first yeah. time we've ever had to pay. Here's where I was scenario okay. possible. We approve this and you get more than you think. And we start, you bring them into a closed session as we want to pay them and it's not in budget. Now I've got to tell a child, no, you can't have that pathway. <laughs> I, I don't understand why you don't think we're on the same team. We're not, I'm not saying we're not on the same team. 
but this board has responsibility, like you do, to the funds that the district spends. And to make sure, that I think in a program like this, you want to make sure you can actually fund it. Hopefully it's successful. I love the fund it was successful. I think they wouldn't be happier if they were. Maybe this is, maybe I'm not understanding this. Mark, Mark you started to make a motion. Well, I said if I would make a motion, that's what it would be, but I will make, I will make a motion that, you know, we, we move the, the hourly rate of, of $12 an hour, all right? Because um, that's what we're asking for today. The wording, the wording in the packet, you, you, you are making the motion. So is do we consider the whole this for a week or so? Kind on it. Um, how about we we a motion to move ahead with this? We we still have the power of the purse as far as the approval on this down the road, and just to keep us updated on progress on this, and we have another discussion once once it's moved along. I mean, I think we're all in favor of. Of this the moving ahead, the concept seems like a good idea. Well, that's and, and going back to what I said earlier is, is that I would like to see this start small to make sure that you know we have a good understanding of how the program works, what it's going to take on the part of our staff, you know, and before you know, before we have six kids that want to go into it, all right. And first year, we cap it at two for K-12 and, and one for um, IT. And then revisit it next year to see how things went. And if it went really well, we got a good handle on it. You know, then we go ahead and, and we, we raise the number of applicants. Can, uh, can I ask a question? Are we basically doing most everything that's required in this except are. We're not an employee program or credential. We're not an employer program. So, so currently we already have 10 kids. No. No. Those 10 kids only, none of those, none of those four are doing it to the depth of the checklist. So they don't have to go to a much deeper level to be correct. Okay. So do we want the motion to say like up to three hires? Yeah. Total? Like is that, do you want me to use that? We say we do that this that year. Do we yeah. Do that? The final thing that we need to be just conscious of is that for us to develop a program and bring this forth, there has to be a salary range or hourly range as part of the description for the children when they look at this. So that was the intent tonight to have that twelve dollars is deemed appropriate. Okay, this that's a requirement of the pathway yeah. to have a dollar amount to it for example. I think we understand. I think everyone's on the same page with the idea, and it's yep. just the only thing different is we've never paid people before. Right. Okay. So is there going to be some type of a stipend for this where that takes on? The we haven't talked about anything. Education <laughs> part. All we have is that. that out 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 out. Out. <laughs> no, but I mean that's that 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 that's part of the yeah. part of the discussion, mm -hmm. you know, and and so I mean. We can go ahead and, and, and start the building block of the program with the hourly rate that we would pay and the number of students that would be a part of it. Um, but if you know if there's going to be uh, there's going to have to be a conversation then about about the, about the stipend. And it's not that it's an evil thing. It's just that again, when it comes time to doing the budget, you got to have a number to plug into it that says it's it's for this. Unless the Says, you know what? It's a small enough number that we'll, we'll find the money somewhere for it. I, I mean, so we don't have it. We don't have a line item for it. It's kind of like the step program. We have a line item for the step program, and there's a limited number of step workers that we can have because we have a budget for that program. And this is kind of running along the same uh, the same lines, but it's. It, you know, it's different, but it's the same thing. It's not in an effort to move us forward. Um, I would make a motion to approve the development of the Youth Apprenticeship K-12 Education Information Technology Pathways at $12 an hour. And then you can bring us what we need after you're more prepared. I would assume how many students you have and there's any concerns that should be 
better for farmers. So, but you're looking right now tonight. I didn't mean to divert us, just but I apparently have. But you're looking first and foremost that we approve you developing these programs. I think because it says pathway. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's Terry is make a motion. Let's uh, make sure make sure what that motion is and get a second um before we go any further. So Terry, are you making the motion that is written in the packet? Uh the only change I made is a motion to approve the development of youth apprenticeship K-12 education information technology pathways at twelve dollars an hour. Okay. I'll second the second about now we can now we can discuss it. Oh, <laughs> I think we did our own. Let's move on. I call the vote. Terry was the first discuss the motion. If the motion is yes. Uh, yes. Motion to approve the pathway. Motion to approve right. the development of the youth apprenticeship K 12 education and information technology pathways at $12 an hour. Just, just so further discussion on that motion is passed. Uh, hearing none, we will take it to a roll call vote. Uh, Terry Wickham. Yes. Randy Wills. Yes. Katie Batten. I mean, yes. Mark Grossman. Yes. John Heidemann. Yes. Chris Martinson. Yes. Ali Schweitzer. Yes. Thank you for your discussion and feedback on the board. Uh, bring back further information on that. We have local students interested. We'll move the agenda to um, legal conference update. The uh, WASB held a um, legal and law seminar for school law in Appleton on the 29th of February, which I attended. Uh, there were eight different breakout workshops. There were two at a time, so you could pick, uh, you could pick up the four of them, which uh, I did the religious accommodations one, um, and that talked about the, the need for employers, including school districts, to make religious accommodations. Um, the, the key operative word is reasonable, and uh, there's been a, a relatively new um, new case um, that went to the Supreme Court on that where uh, a postal worker um, asked for a religious accommodation for um, not working on Sunday. And because of the Amazon contracts, the postal system pretty much makes all the, all the or most of the carriers work on Sunday. And um, the uh, lower courts all, all said that, that it wasn't reasonable was under what they call the de minimis. In other words, you should accommodate unless it, it, um, it is something other than a minimal financial or a minimal disruption of the workplace. The lower courts all filed in favor of the Postal Service, but the Supreme Court reversed it and said uh, they, they loosened up on that. So it, it doesn't tell us exactly where the line is, but there is there is kind of a new line. Um, the, the, the other um, seminar I attended was the Title IX changes. And the main thing I got out of that is the Title IX changes came as a result of an executive order signed by the president in 2020. Uh, and they've been going through the rule making process um, until fall of 2022 when they finally, the rules finally got um, established but not yet posted and they were going to be posted last summer but it was pushed back till um middle of the or no end of the end of, end of the calendar year then it was pushed back to march and uh i checked today and they still haven't been issued the, the people that gave the seminar um thought that some of them thought that they uh, it wouldn't come out till after the election because it's a, title line is such a hot issue and obviously we've we've seen 
the differences of opinion here in this board on Title IX and what those changes that the president wanted um, uh, to do. So we don't know. It could come out any time, or it could be postponed until after the election. It, it was generally a consensus of the, present, the attorneys presenting that if the uh, parties changed and the presidency that those would all be repealed and we'd go back to where we were before. So that's, uh, but they're, if they're extensive. And, you know, we've talked about a couple of the controversial ones involving transgender, uh, whether transgender identity is a recognized uh, uh, civil right or not. But there's a lot of other things other than that, um, mostly involve red tape. Um, uh, for instance, in the new regulation, each school district will have to have, um, uh, first of all, a coordinator and an investigator and a decision maker that are appointed. And those will have to be in place so that when people, if people file Title IX complaint of any type, which can be a, a simple as a sexual, um, uh, sexual, uh, Harassment, sexual harassment claim, something like that falls into that. So um, it's it's way up in the air is the main thing. It's I've got to hope if anybody wants to review the 13 changes, I've got about a 10 page document that deeply describes all of them, which they described in the in the seminar. Um, a lot of them are very technical uh, things. Uh, I attended another one on library books. Um, and um, what is the law on library books as far as uh, what represents discrimination when you restrict library books? Um, we did find out it is okay to restrict books. It is okay to remove them, but you should have a set of standards that, are, that you apply um, uh, to it. Uh, and, you know, they, they described a few cases. Uh, there was a, a big case in Georgia during COVID where a bunch of books were restricted by a school board taken off the shelf because of explicit sexual content. Um, some people made the charge that they weren't being taken off because of explicit sexual content, but because of discrimination against LGBT. You know, and it went all the way pretty much uh, uh, to the Supreme Court and the, the higher courts um, did decide that the, the board acted properly because they they were screening everything of, of sexual content, not just, you know, one group. So it, uh, it uh, you can do that, but it's you're, you're advised to have a set of standards in place um, before people um, uh, file complaints. I also found out in Wisconsin, a lot of school districts, if a, if a parent files a complaint on a book, um, their policy takes it off the shelf until it's reviewed. Ours does not, and there's quite a few that don't as well, but that is an option, and those are, those are perfectly acceptable ways to do it as long as you have it in your policy it was all about yes you can restrict library books you can remove them but you need to follow your policy you need to have a policy about it and the policy needs to be relatively even-handed so that that was pretty interesting there and um, uh, the the, the last one I went to was public employees in the public square, and one of the presenters was Mark from uh, that was here. And um, uh, so a lot of those uh, things that he presented about uh, social media were, were presented again, but in, in a little bit more depth. Um, and um, the, the other part of that is that uh, can you restrict employees' speech? And there's, there's different guidelines for that. Um, uh, and I can, you know, there, uh, you, can, you can restrict 
the speech, if it's disruptive to the workplace, um, if it doesn't involve their their job, you know, in other words, if, if it's their job to speak publicly, then that's a different thing. But um, uh, paid speech is not public speech. So when, when somebody is working for the district um, and, you know, they gave the case of somebody putting up a BLM flag in their class. Um, if you have a policy that there's no flags of any kind other than, uh, other than say, the American flag and the, the state flag, et cetera, then uh, you can have that person take that down. But if, if, you're poly, if you just come along and say, well, we don't like that, you, you, in other words, you have to put it in your policy to uh, to be even-handed about about everything here, so that that's uh, that was an interesting thing as well. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, the feedback there was um, the, the uh, most of the people, a lot of the people that went there felt like there should be more time for questions and less time. Uh, presenting by the attorneys because sometimes they got into areas that people didn't really have questions of and spent a lot of time and it was the question periods that really got got a lot of things done so a lot of the comments into WSB was less presentation time more question time and interaction and more time for board members from different it was very well attended it was people from all over the state I've seen these summer conferences, and two years ago, there was hardly anybody there. Um, I think the new director is doing a good job of really uh, getting the word out and, and uh, getting people to these things. Uh, but they, they, you know, one of the feedback that a lot of us gave to the WSB was to provide time for um, interaction between the presenters and the board members, and also in between the, the uh, the board members. So that uh, that was pretty much uh, the way that went. It was it was good and good to make some connections. Um, I also uh, there um, found out about um, from some other board members a uh, uh, something that I think you all probably got. Um, because I think every school board member in the state got it, is uh, Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty is holding a school board summit on Friday, April 12th in Waukesha. And it looks like uh, they're going to have a very different perspective than the presenters at uh, WASB. And I think uh, some possible good resources for us. I have registered for it. And I'm going to go. I'm paying for it out of my own pocket, and I'll be glad to come back and let you know whether I think this is a resource the board would want to do as they do future ones. Um, some some of the boards there were were sending board members you know, in the same way they would for WASB. Um, I'm not recommending that at this point until so see how it works, um, but. Um, some of the you can see in the handout um, some of the things that they will be presenting on uh, there and also our own attorney i found out the other day that uh, uh, our own attorney jim macy is going to be uh, doing one of these seminars there uh, empowering school board members so he was at the meeting that you the super secret meeting that you and john went to the friday of the, of the uh, of the uh, state school board convention. I'm sorry. Jim was. Yeah. Yeah. Super secret. Super secret. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't invited. I was there. Scott was there, and we weren't invited. Huh. Yeah. So you must not make the list. Super secret. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So this is. This, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to this is earlier. This is a, this is an honor agenda. Well, it, it is because uh, no, we're kind of covering up page for that was through WASB. This is not that WASB, is it? I kind of found out about it there. And, and, I mean, you probably get this 
you know, in, in discussion, I think if it's, if it's related, I'm going to allow it. You can't have access. Uh, I don't think you can do that, Chris. <laughs> it's yeah. not related. Well, just like when you brought up about uh, oh, uh, something for, for somebody. That's really it was part of the comment. It was part of that. Well, it's uh, really uh, uh, anyway, my, my uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go in the close Yeah, thank you. We have one more thing to do with our uh, insurance. Yep. yep. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. Go public. Go public. Go public. Go public. Go public. Wait a second, I have to, well, yeah, you have to run it out first. Yeah, let it happen. I need a motion to allow technology in closed session. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All right. Uh, uh, we'll call yep. Terry Wagner? Yes. Andy Wills? Yes. Amy Batnam? Yes. Mark Wilson? Yes. John Heidelman? Yes. Holly Schweitzer? John Silent? She's saying yes, but. Oh. Okay, so we have that, and now, uh, pursuant to section 1 c Wisconsin statute, the Board of Education will convene a closed session to discuss continued employment of certified and support staff members over which the board has jurisdiction and exercises responsibility. Also, uh, the Board of Education will convene in closed session to discuss the employment and compensation of administrative certified and support staff members over which the board has jurisdiction and exercises responsibility. And uh, pursuant to section, uh, section 19.85.1c, the Board of Education will convene in closed session to discuss evaluation of administrators over which the board has jurisdiction and exercise of responsibility and open to a motion to so open both sections. Also got it. Who's, who's, who's Terry? Seconded by Kate. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Roll session. Mandy Wilson. Mm -hmm. Katie Matton. Yes. yes. Mark Grossman. Yes. yes. John Heidemann. Chris Martinson. Yes. Oh. Right, sir. Yes. Terry Baker. Yes. 703. 703. All right, Holly, I'm going to end the meeting here, all right, and end your meeting again. And then I'm going to bring it back up in the back on my computer so that you're just going to log back into the same meeting in like a few minutes. Okay?